Welcome. It is Wednesday, April the 8th, 2020, and I am in San Diego, California. Behind me is the uh, downtown San Diego uh, city skyline, and then this is the inner harbor that there are oftentimes are ships that go in and out. The, uh, the um, Coast Guard is located like uh, right over there. So there may be some helicopters that might take, take off that you might be able to see behind me. Um, and interestingly, I've flown in and out of here oh, several times on business in the past. And you would oftentimes hear airplanes that would be landing and taking off. And since I've been here since Sunday, there's been very few uh, airplanes that have had activity here. So it makes it more conducive to doing a Facebook Live here, uh, but uh, it is a sign of the times that there aren't many people out here that are flying commercially anymore. So um, interestingly, I did a little bit of research on the city of San Diego, just so that you can understand. I always like to have some history explained about the places that the Lord has taken me. So San Diego is the eighth largest city in the United States and second largest city in California. You know, today of course is April 8th. The number eight means new beginnings. And you know, the city is located of course on the coast of the Pacific Ocean, Southern California, about 120 miles south of Los Angeles. And um, I did not realize that they were the second largest city. I thought San Francisco was. San Francisco is actually, I think, the fourth largest. Um, San Jose has got a million people, uh, and they have like 1.4 million people in San Diego. So, um, and then I think it's 884,000 is what San Francisco has. So let me read a little bit of background about San Diego, you know, um, just to, to let you guys know before we get into the topic. The topic of the day is let my people go. Are you prepared to pass over into your freedom? Because this, of course, is the first night of the celebration of Passover, which is celebrated everywhere except for Israel. They celebrate it for eight days. Again, number eight, new beginnings. I believe prophetically that that is what we're getting ready to see is a whole new beginning of uh, things in this world. There's going to be a lot of changes going on over the next eight days. And so I'm going to read um, about the, the, some of the history of Passover and just kind of what the Lord's been showing me. A lot of people have been a lot of, having a lot of dreams, a lot of prophetic people, a lot of people have been reaching out to me. You know, I didn't sleep much last night, went to bed, I don't know, early, like at maybe 9, woke up at 1.30 in the morning, um, had dreams, uh, went to sleep for maybe a half an hour, woke back up, and I'm ready to go. So there's just a lot of excitement, a lot of things that people are feeling in their spirits right now. And it's true. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on around the world, and it's not all fear-based with the pandemic. That is, of course, a part of it, but there's a lot of spiritual things that God is doing um, that we're all going to see. We're all going to watch play out over the next, uh, at least in the next eight days, and then they're, they're at thereafter, of course. So, so anyway, let me go into a little bit of history of San Diego real quickly. Um, so the birthplace of California, San Diego, is known for its mild year-round climate, natural deep water harbor, extensive beaches, and a long association with the U.S. Navy. In fact, right over here is a naval base, um, a, a large one. I'm going to be talking about it. And their recent emergence in uh, San Diego as a healthcare and biotechnology development center. So the population is 1.4 million people. Again, San Diego is the eighth largest city in America. And uh, historically, home to the Kumaye people, remember I say yay a lot, but there's apparently a people called Kumaye. San Diego was the first site visited by Europeans on what is now the west coast of the United States. Upon landing in San Diego Bay in 1542, Juan Cabrillo um, claimed the entire area for Spain, forming the basis for the settlement of Alta, California 200 years later. The Presidio and Mission of San Diego, founded in 1769, were the first European settlement in what is now California. In 1821, San Diego became part of newly independent Mexico, and in 1850 became part of the United States. 
following the Mexican-American War. Diego means James or Jacob, if you did not know that. So how interesting is that? The naval base, which is right over here, you may hear some, again, I saw a huge, massive ship that just came in, took some pictures of it, and uh, maybe I'll post that on my Facebook Live when we're done here. But the naval base, San Diego, which locals refer to as 32nd Street Naval Station, is the second largest surface ship base of the United States. So this is the second largest naval base. San Diego is the principal home port of the Pacific Fleet, consisting of over 50 ships and over 190 tenant commands. The base is composed of 13 piers stretched over almost a thousand acres of land and 326 acres of water. The total on-base population is over 24,000 military personnel and over 10,000 civilians. So that's huge. Um, there is one of the ships that uh, its home base is here. It's called a, a Littoral, L-I-T-T-O-R-A-L, Littoral Combat Ship that's named the USS Freedom. Isn't that interesting? There's also the ship Mercy. Where have we heard of the ship Mercy before? Well, of course, that is the ship that's at the Port of Los Angeles right now that I saw last Thursday. And a uh, huge ship, massive ship. Um, it is the lead ship of her class of hospital ships in non-commissioned service with the United States Navy. Her sister ship is Comfort. Again, Mercy and Comfort. We talked about that yesterday when I was reading the, uh, the Bible verse that, that talked about that. Uh, it says that Mercy is the third U.S. Navy ship to be named for the virtue Mercy. In accordance with the Geneva Conventions, Mercy and her crew do not carry any offensive weapons, though defensive weapons are available. Attacking Mercy is a war crime. And again, we've been told that these ships, even though they're saying publicly that they're being used for the coronavirus, we've heard privately they're actually being used to help the children, to rescue the children that have been sex abused and sex trafficked that are in the tunnels underneath LA and underneath New York City. So how interesting is that, that Mercy actually is right here in San Diego is where it normally would stay. Um, it says it was launched in July of 1975 and has been in service since 1986. Home port is, of course, uh, San Diego. Uh, the length of the ship is 894 feet, which is pretty darn long, and the speed that it can go is 20 miles per hour, or 31 kilometers per hour, or 17 knots. There's the number, 17. What does 17 mean? It's overcoming the enemy, complete victory. Again, I see 17 all the time, every day, probably, I don't know, 50 times a day, just a lot. And that's also President Trump's number, 17. You'll notice he refers to that number a lot, a lot. In fact, you can do a Google search, you can do a YouTube search, and President Trump talks about 17 a lot. People that have given him like football jerseys have the jersey number being 17. Again, 17 means overcoming the enemy and complete victory. It's a great number if you are seeing number 17 a lot. Um, the number of beds on the Mercy ship, it can hold 1,000 patient beds. Um, let me see what else is there. In uh, June of 2006, Mercy anchored off of, I don't know if it's pronounced Jolo or Holo, Philippines. Uh, Mercy also anchored in Dili, East Timor, as part of Pacific Partnership 2008. Medical staff from Operation Smile and the Military Treatment Facility aboard Mercy perform a cleft lip surgery during the ship's visit to provide humanitarian and civic assistance to the people of Bangladesh. Mercy was built as a San Clemente, which is just north of me uh, in California, class oil tanker. SS Worth by National Steel and Shipbuilding Company in 1976. But starting in July of 1984, she was renamed and converted to a hospital ship by the same company. Launched on July 20th, 1985, Mercy was placed in service on November 8th, 1986. Uh, 
um, the conversions from oil tankers to the Mercy ship cost $208 million and took 35 months to complete. Her primary mission is to provide rapid, flexible, mobile, acute medical and surgical services to support Marine Corps, Air, Ground Task Forces deployed ashore, Army and Air Force units deployed ashore, and Naval Amphibious Task Forces and Battle Forces afloat. Mercy Home Ported in San Diego is normally in reduced operating status. Her crew remains a part of the staff of Naval Medical Center San Diego until ordered to sea, at which time they have five days to fully activate the ship. And of course, since March 27th, it has been now at uh, the Port of Los Angeles there. So, yesterday, I was kind of share a little bit about some uh, personal stuff. Had a calm day yesterday. I actually finished doing my personal taxes. Um, need to now do my ministry taxes, try to get those done before April 15th. Um, and it's so interesting because the, the hotel that I'm at, but again, a good friend of mine, who I think might even be watching, um, he, uh, the Lord spoke to him and told him to put me at a certain place, wherever I needed to be, um, for this week and then another place next week. And so I, am in, I chose to stay in San Diego. And it's very interesting because the hotel I'm staying at, I have not seen another guest the whole time I've been here since Sunday afternoon when I checked in. So it's like I have my own private hotel and it's just uh, interesting. Never have seen that before in my life. Um, did my Facebook Live from the top of the roof yesterday. Um, and then I noticed this around 4, 4.33 p.m. There was a unique looking rainbow that was back in the mountains behind my hotel, behind San Diego. And I sensed it was a sign from, God's, uh, from God that says, I'm gonna protect my people, my remnant. You know, this, this whole Passover that's starting tonight, I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about the detail of that, but um, I'm, I'm really sensing that, you know, there is going to be justice brought to those who have been doing a lot of evil and corrupt things around the world. And the Lord's gonna protect his remnant from this, um, and again, the plagues that plagued Egypt and so forth, that was the tenth plague. The last plague was killing of the firstborn. You know, there's a lot of fear out there with the coronavirus. Yes, people are dying. It's not as bad as what the media would want to blow it up to be and the Democrats would want to blow it up to be because they would like to crash the whole economy so that Trump can't get reelected. But that's not going to happen. So, but I really sense the Lord saying, for those who truly know the Lord, those who are aligned with the Lord, they're going to be protected from what is getting ready to come out and to be exposed. So, and there's been you know, a ton of people who have been messaging me saying that I've had a dream last night that had this, this, and this in it. A lot of confirming dreams out there that the Lord is, His justice is now coming to the entire world. A lot of people have been waiting on this for a long time saying, is there ever going to be justice laid down to those who are operating in a lot of evil and wickedness and uh, yes I, I full-heartedly um, believe that that is getting ready to happen and it's already started I believe so the title of today is let my people go are you prepared to pass over into your freedom so over the last few weeks you know interesting to observe people how they responded to the coronavirus you know I I came into to Southern California, I guess it was a week ago Sunday, and I didn't see many people wearing masks. And uh, then I go to get some groceries here in San Diego on Monday, and at the grocery store, I probably saw 80% of the people wearing masks. I'm like, wow, that's a, a whole lot of uh, different uh, changes there. And you could sense a lot of the people were scared and in fear um, that they don't want to catch that, a lot of anxiety and fear going on. Um, and I sense that those who truly knew who they were in Christ, those who knew their authority, those who had been taught this or pressed in on their own to learn this on their own. You know, I, I think about my life. I didn't know anything about walking in a protection with the divine, you know, a, a pr protection of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord on my life until 2009. I started learning about it and it started to work for me. You know, again, I've been healed now of everything since 2009. It's been 11 straight years. I don't take Tylenol, ibuprofen, nothing. I don't even take vitamins. I've learned that the Lord will protect us if we know our authority, if we don't get into fear and worry. If we don't, if we get into fear and worry, then the enemy can give us what we fear. You know, just like think about Job. 
Job was in fear about his children. We cannot be in fear. If we're in fear, we're on the enemy's territory. So we need to learn and know our authority. You know, and there's a percentage of people that are in, uh, in the church that do, but there's a whole huge percentage that don't. They have no idea. And they're just in fear like the rest of the world is. So, um, so anyway, as the coronavirus spread is now starting to slow, you know, which is interesting. That's uh, uh, good timing, you know, for this. In California and Washington, New York, they're saying that it's starting to slow, which is a good sign. Um, there's a lot of similarities with the Passover and the plagues that had came upon the Egyptians and, and what we're seeing now throughout the world. You know, we're seeing a lot of uh, lives that are again closely aligned with the Lord, that are protected by his anointing. So it's important for us to learn and know that. Um, and then there's those that are in the church who are in, you know, a lot of sin, sexual sin and things like that. And they're worried and they're in fear and they probably should be. They should be in fear of the Lord because you don't get away with that forever. You're going to have stuff that's going to come upon you that's not going to be fun to deal with. So uh, the Lord told me basically it's time to get consecrated to avoid the consequences from sin in our lives. Again, it's time to get consecrated to the Lord to avoid the consequences from the sin if we're operating in that. You know, again, too many churches aren't preaching this anymore. They're preaching the hyper grace message. They're not talking about the uh, message of repentance and uh, purity and holiness and consecrating our lives. And they need to be teaching that. They need to be preaching that because there's only a small remnant that will get into heaven. And so we need to expand that. There's a whole lot of people out there that are not where they should be. So the Egyptians controlled God's Jewish people as they were slaves to the Egyptians for about 210 years. And the Lord said, who and what are you a slave to? What is binding you? What is holding you back? What is pulling you down in your life? Now, who is currently controlling your life? Speaking of helicopters, there's a helicopter right now. Looks like it's a Coast Guard. As you can see it, it's got a couple of orange or reddish colored and white. It's not a military helicopter. But think about it. You now the, uh, the Jewish people, the Hebrews, were controlled, they were slaves to the Egyptians. Who are we slave to? Who is currently controlling our life? Is it the enemy? Do we hear more of the enemy's voice in our minds? that is causing us to do things to hurt our relationships, that cause us to be broken? Uh, is it that we are bound to have trust and faith in our job or our doctors, or do we truly trust the Lord? And it could be that we are being controlled and hurt and we're slaves to our spouse. You know, if you are being bullied, if you're being hurt, if you're being Jezebel, and you're afraid because they're saying things, they're going to do things, and they're lying about you. Well, you need to make sure that you're more afraid of the Lord than you are another person, even if they're your spouse. So you may have to separate to gain freedom if they refuse to get delivered. And that's true. You know, I've had to do that in my life. It's like I, the Lord spoke to me and said, who are you going to obey? Are you going to bow down to the demonic spirits in your spouse, or are you going to bow down to the Lord. You have to make that decision. Isn't it interesting? I see there's like a light blue right over my head. <laughs> so there's like a, the light is shining through the, the blueness there of the clouds. There's clouds all around. Again, this is the city of uh, San Diego that's behind me here. So for the first time since Israel left um, Egypt thousands of years ago, Modern day Israel today now is an entire lockdown during Passover. How interesting is that? The first time. And of course, the whole world now is on lockdown at the exact same time of those that are in Israel. So Passover is going to be very special tonight here in the United States. I really sense it in my spirit. There's going to be some, some big things spiritually that are going down. And already they have gone down. 
but there's going to be some of this that's going to actually come to light, and we're going to see what's, uh, what the Lord is doing. So again, Passover starts tonight. It goes on for, for seven days over in Jerusalem in Israel. But if you live outside of Israel, it goes on for eight days. Eight is the symbol for new beginnings. So I always, I, I always like to do a little more research. So I'm like, I wondered why. Why was it like considered seven days you know, or eight days? So quite simply, the Torah itself tells us on numerous occasions that we are to celebrate Passover. This is the Jewish people for seven days. Again, outside of Israel, it's celebrated for eight days. The question's why? The Midrash, which is an ancient commentary on part of the Hebrew scriptures attached to the biblical text, the earliest Midrashim comes from the second century AD, although much of the content's older, explains that although the Jews left Egypt on the first day of Passover, they were pursued by the Egyptians until the parting of the Red Sea, which occurred seven days later. Thus, although the Exodus started on the first day, it was not completed until the seventh day. We are commanded to celebrate those seven days. Seven days of the week. The same Midrash also connects the seven days of Passover to the seven days of the week. In the words of the Midrash, no leavened bread shall be seen with you for seven days, corresponding to the seven days between the redemption from Egypt and the dividing of the Red Sea. Just as there were seven days of creation at the beginning, and just as the Sabbath is observed at the end of seven days, so shall these seven days be kept each year. Some explain the connection between the seven days of Passover and the seven days of creation. Thus, just as without God's creating the world, it would not exist. So too, without the Jews being redeemed from Egypt and ultimately receiving the Torah, the world would have ceased to exist as the purpose of creation would not have been realized. So now I want to read Exodus 12. I'm going to read the whole chapter. Again, this is all about the Passover. You know, how often do we as Christians read about the Passover? Oftentimes, we know that there are messianic uh, congregations that celebrate the Passover seders. I've celebrated the seders meal a couple of times in my life. But how many times do we actually go back to read Exodus 12 for ourselves? So I'm going to go ahead and read that as a small military boat goes on down the harbor. All right, here it goes. Chapter 12. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire. That's a military helicopter right here. Okay, I'm right next to the uh, San Diego Naval Base. Okay, do not eat it raw nor boil it all with water, but roast it in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. You know, I'm just sensing the Holy Spirit really strongly right now. I don't know if you, know, I don't know if you guys are or not, but 
I'm really, really strongly sensing something major is going down tonight and we're going to know about it. Some of us overnight, we're going to know about it and it's going to be more public tomorrow and the rest of the next couple of days. I really sense the 8th through the 11th, we're going to see a lot of stuff come out in the news, some significant stuff. All right, let's go back. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. So both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. You know, there's a lot of us that have been waiting for judgment for, for those that we've heard of that are doing evil, evil, satanic, demonic things. And I just sense the Lord says, enough, it is time. It is time. It is time. He has a man in the White House who is going to do what needs to be done, no matter what people that would come oppose him uh, say or do. So it says, now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Again, I just sense symbolically, this is the entire world tonight is going to see this go down. All right, uh, this is chapter 12 of Exodus, verse 14. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation for you. No manner of work shall be done on them, but that which everyone must eat, that only may be prepared by you. Verse 17. So you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on the same day I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as an everlasting ordinance. In the first month on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven shall be found in your houses, since whoever eats what is leavened, that same person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread. Okay, verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Isn't that interesting? We're all being told to stay in our homes around the world. How amazing is that symbolically to what we're going through right now? Amazing. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians... And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you just as he promised that you shall keep this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? that you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Then the children of Israel went away and did so just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. So this morning when I got up, looked out my hotel room, I'm up, Actually, on the ninth floor, and uh, it's interesting, 8 plus 9 is 17. I 
see 17 everywhere. 17 is overcoming the enemy, complete victory. But I looked out my windows and I have a corner hotel room so I can see all of like downtown San Diego. And I can see this cloud coming over the city and it just reminded me so much of like the 10th plague, the plague of death, the angel of death coming over all of the land of Egypt. And I just sensed it coming all over the land of America and the land of the world. And for those who did not have their lives aligned with the Lord, we're going to get into fear, we're going to get into worry. Those who are deeply into the demonic, those that are in the cabal, all that stuff is demonic. And the Lord is shutting that down. The Lord is exposing this stuff. And there's going to be people that are going to die, whether they get arrested, whether there's suicides and so forth, because the Lord is bringing them to justice. Enough is enough is enough. And so I took pictures, I did a video, put that out on, on Facebook so you can see it. Um, but I just could really strongly sense that that was so symbolic about what's getting ready to go down. All right, now let's read. Again, this is, this is the 12th chapter of Exodus. This is verse 29. The 10th plague, death of the firstborn. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all his servants, all the Egyptians. There was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Isn't that interesting? You know, there's a lot of wailing. In fact, if you watch the Ten Commandments, that they, they again, they're still showing that. That's a miracle on, uh, I think it's on CBS that they had it on. I didn't get to see it, though, but it was on Saturday night. Remember the wailing, you know, when they were losing and they were dying in the firstborns. Now, there's going to be a lot of, hopefully, a lot of people that are humbling themselves. The Lord doesn't want to have anyone die but he gives them time to repent and when they refuse to there are consequences that's why the lord told me this morning i'm, I'm concentrating I want people to consecrate their lives to me or else there will be consequences for the sin that they're in and that's so true so here here we go in in the uh chapter 12 here the plague came and there was death death in the land there's death of course right now throughout the world going on but once that death happens once that passes and for those who are aligned with the lord you're going to be spared you're going to be protected you're not going to have to walk into fear you're not going to have to wear the masks and so forth and take the vaccines because you're going to be provided for by the lord he's going to protect you but what happens is that there's a purification process that goes on when you take those who have demonic spirits within them who are operating controlling this world through the cabal uh, those that are in the churches that are controlling the pastors and there's those that are pastors that have demonic spirits that need to be exposed need to be shut down when you take away in fact there's a pa there's a pastor of a, of, of a messianic um, messianic Jewish congregation who said Nelson I've lost like four or five of my uh, families out of like I don't know a total of 50 or 60 people that attend because I'm, I'm concerned you know because they're 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 relying they're Jezebel and and I'm like listen I go you got a now more pure church and he's like I never thought about it like that I'm like yes I said that's what the Lord is doing all over the place he's purifying the entire world we need to come to the humbleness and repentance and consecrate our lives and if we won't and we're refusing to and we're operating within the body of Christ in the church under the guise of a person who's godly and a Christian, the Lord needs to stop that. He needs to have it exposed. They need to be taken out if they're going to refuse to get delivered. In fact, I remember a person from Ohio that uh, the pastor had confronted a woman that he knew had the spirit of Jezebel. She refused to get delivered and he told her, you have two options, either get delivered and you can stay in my congregation or refuse to get delivered and you're gonna have to go. Well, she refused to own it. She refused to get delivered and so she 
had to go on her way. You know, and there's a lot of times where people go from church to church to church and try to infect it with the demonic spirit. So, but that uh, messianic pastor said, oh my gosh, that's true. I've got a now more pure church because what would happen is that, that uh, those, the, there was one specific, I don't know if it was a woman or a guy, um, that had that spirit, but they were infecting a couple of, the, of these others and they all teamed up together to try to come again, which is what Jezebel does. And so now they were gone. So it was like, oh my gosh, even though I've got a little bit of a smaller, you know, whatever, 15% uh, smaller congregation, they're more pure now. And he goes, and that's gonna be easier to teach them and for us to walk together as a body. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Isn't it interesting? It's like there's dark clouds behind the city of San Diego, but they, yet the sun stays out. Huh. That's very interesting. It's very sunny, you know, right uh, on where I'm at. But it's very cloudy back there in the city, very dark. I think, again, that's symbolic. I see a lot of symbolism in the clouds that are behind me whenever the Lord has me speak wherever I'm at. So, kind of cool. Um, I'm going to get a drink. I'm thirsty. Although you really can't see my face. <laughs> it's pretty dark when the sun's like right behind me, so... All right, so anyway, then after the angel of death came and killed all the firstborns, now comes the exodus. Now comes the freedom. And so for a lot of us, we're going through a time that's fearful, worried, all that stuff that goes on. Some of us have not worked. Some of us are not getting paychecks. We have to trust the Lord to provide. I have to trust the Lord to provide for me and my assistant, uh, Tina, um, so that we will continue to be able to sustain life. So, but once this passes, once the purification happens, then guess what? There's going to be a lot of good things that are going to come out of this because there's going to be a lot less evil that are operating, that are controlling us in the world. So it's going to be a good thing ultimately, and it's going to be a good thing for us econ uh, economically, but hopefully it's a good thing for us spiritually. Hopefully we will draw closer to the Lord once the truth comes out about all this evil stuff that uh, is getting ready to happen. So let me go on. Exodus 12, 31. It says, Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as you have said and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, we shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Isn't that interesting? Those who are in deep evil what the Lord is doing is he's, if they're going to remain in that, is he's going to take the money and he's going to transfer it. The wealth that was stored up from the wicked is going to be transferred to the righteous. But again, you have to be in the right position with the Lord. You have to make sure that you are not operating in a sinful, uh, lust-based, sexual-based life because you're not going to be blessed. So in this case, those that were evil lost what they stored up. You know, there's a lot of people out here that are very evil, very wicked, multi-multi-millionaires, the elite, the cabal, and the Lord is going to take that from them. And we'll see how it gets redistributed to those who are more of the Lord. Then the children of Israel, this is verse 37, then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth about uh, 600,000 men on foot besides children. A mixed multitude went up with them also, and flocks and herds, and a great deal of livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait. 
nor have they prepared provisions for themselves. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years on that very same day, and it came to pass that all the armies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night of solemn observance to the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord, a solemn observance for all the children of Israel throughout their generations. Okay, verse 43 talks about the Passover regulations. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat it, but every man's servant who is bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then he may eat it. A sojourner and a hired servant shall not eat it. In one house it shall be eaten. You shall not carry any of the flesh outside the house, nor shall you break one of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as a native of the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat it. One law shall be for the native born and for the stranger who dwells among you. Thus all the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. And it came to pass on that very same day that the Lord brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt according to their armies. So there's going to be a lot of freedom that we're going to see when this plague of the coronavirus is gone and it's done. And, uh, and then there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come out of what has been um, done behind the scenes that we've not even been told. Now there are some, of course, that have been speaking what they believe is happening or going to happen with the arrests of those that are evil and wicked and so forth. But the, the mainstream media, of course, is not validating that, not reporting on that. And a lot, and a lot of times it's not going to be reported on only because it is being done behind the scenes and nobody else knows about it. They shouldn't know about it, the details of that. So, so to truly walk in total freedom, we need to get our soul wounds healed and we need to get delivered from the demons from our past. If you hear demons, you will be slaves to their voices a long time, as long as they have the authority. We also need to keep our social distances from those who are spiritually unclean, no matter who they are, or else their demons will affect and infect you. Isn't that a cool cloud formation right there? Very neat, I love what the Lord does behind the scenes, it's almost symbolic. Behind my scenes, I'm seeing things in the heavenlies, in the clouds, you know, it's pretty cool. So we need to let go of the evils of this world and to move forward cleansed with only godly things from the Lord. You think about Jesus, you talk about social distancing, I talked about this, what, two weeks ago in Phoenix. We need to be socially distanced from those spiritually whose hearts have an evil intent to come against and to hurt us. We need to stay away from them. Um, and we need to confront those who are operating in the church who are perverted, who are liars, who are deceivers, who operate in the spirit of Jezebel, Leviathan. Because just like President Trump is draining the swamp, even Jesus drained the swamp. Remember Jesus? He had to stay away from those that struggled with the demonic spirits, the Pharisees and the elect, and he attempted to drain the swamp. When he turned over the tables, he had righteous anger. Let's read about that. This is in Matthew 21, 12 through 17. It says, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? 
And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants? You have perfected praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. So next I like to read, I love um, Lana Vosser, um, what she is getting from the Lord. Oftentimes she talks about pursuing holiness and purity and righteousness and consecration. goes right along with what the Lord has been uh, instructing me to do with the ministry of RTF, Restored to Freedom. So I'm going to jump over to Lana Vosser. She had posted this on uh, Facebook, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday at 7.54 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, so it was, what, 10.54 p.m. Eastern Time, United States, last night. It says, this Passover will be a time of deliverance and impartation. I heard the Lord say, apply my blood and revoke the attack of the enemy for ownership. So again, here's what Lana says. As I sat with the Lord today, the Lord showed me that there were false ownerships that the enemy was attempting to put over God's people recently. The enemy is trying hard to take ownership of significant breakthrough that God is bringing over Passover in the lives of God's people individually, corporately, and in the earth. I heard the Lord say, at Passover, apply my blood over your lives and revoke the attack of the enemy for ownership and by faith take ownership of what I am speaking over your lives. Revoke means officially cancel, a decree, decision, or promise. The synonyms are cancel, repeal, rescind, reverse, annul, nullify, declare null and void, make void, void, invalidate, render invalid, quash. I felt it was very significant as we move into this Passover that we are crossing over into greater promises of God. And the move of God in the and the enemy is attempting to take ownership in the spirit. But as we revoke any attack of ownership by applying the blood of Jesus and declaring the blood of Jesus over our lives, the Lord showed me a deliverance happening for many at Passover and deliverances in the earth. This is the time to revoke ownership the enemy is attempting to take in the earth through COVID-19, the coronavirus, through standing in the gap, 2 Chronicles 7:14, and then in our lives individually and in families. The Lord highlighted to me that it was so important to be intentional this Passover in our decree, in our faith, in our position to revoke the false claims of the enemy by the application of the blood of the Lamb. As the blood of Jesus is applied over lives at this time of Passover, there will be a crossing over that will take place. I hear some very loud helicopters. Interesting. Uh, okay, let me go back. As the blood of Jesus is applied over lives at this time of Passover, there will be a crossing over that will take place. A deliverance for many of God's people. A healing and impartations received from the Lord. He says, friends, I encourage you to take communion over Passover, reflecting on what the Lord has done, and thank him for the power of his blood. Revoke the attack of the enemy over your life. Revoke any false claims and decree the truth. This is a threshold being crossed over in the spirit for a greater move of his spirit in our lives, through our lives and the nations of the earth. The importance of this Passover weighed heavily on me and how we position ourselves in this Passover time and position our hearts and engage. That book's her book. That boat says pump outs, pump outs. <laughs> Interesting. That's symbolic. For, there it goes. <laughs> Pepilapoo.com. Pump outs. Interesting. We want to pump out <laughs> those that are operating in the demonic spirits. We want to pump out the demons from our lives. Pump outs. Never, never even seen that <laughs> word before. All right, let me go back. 
The importance of this Passover weighed heavily on me and how we position ourselves in this Passover time and position our hearts and engage with him intentionally by faith, as not only will time Passover be a time of deliverance, but also impartation. I heard him say this Passover will be marked as a time of crossover, deliverance, and taking greater ownership of what I am speaking to my people as they stand in faith and in the revelation of the power of my shed blood. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the word of their testimony, for they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. Revelation 12, 11. All right. I'm going to conclude this with talking about how over the last every about every hundred years the last like three or four hundred years there has been some type of a plague that has come upon the world so beginning in 1720 an outbreak of bubonic plague in Marseille France known as the Great Plague of Marseille killed an estimated 100,000 people in that city and surrounding provinces and towns However, that particular outbreak was far from the first, last, or most severe instance of a bubonic plague in history. In particular, the Black Death, a bubonic plague epidemic that hit Eurasia in the 14th century, is estimated to have killed 30 to 60 percent of Europe's human population, up to 50 million people. And this, again, the coronavirus pales in comparison to uh, the bubonic plague. Not even close, not even, uh, I don't know, probably less than 1%. So, primarily from 1347 to 1351 is when that hit. The first of several cholera pandemics recorded in modern history spread from India to Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and Eastern Africa in the early 19th century. However, that pandemic did not begin in 1820. It persisted from 1817, there's the 17 again, until 1824, and six more cholera pandemics were charted over the following 150 years. The so-called Spanish flu, or 1918 flu pandemic, influenza caused by an H1N1 virus, spread in the early 20th century, killing upwards of 50 million people worldwide. Despite the name, most modern scholarship suggests the pandemic did not actually originate in Spain. Once again, although that pandemic did encompass the year 1920, it began much earlier, continuing roughly from January 1918 to December 1920. So now the COVID-19 coronavirus disease outbreak that made this image of interest in 2020 was initially reported at the end of 2019 but it was not officially characterized as a pandemic by the World Health Organization until March 2020. So again, you can see 2020, 1920, 1820, and then 1720. So like every 100 years, there's been some type of a plague that has been visited upon this world. And the whole uh, point of explaining that is just to understand when you know who you are in Christ, you will be protected. You will have the divine protection of the Lord. If you are not aligned with Christ, if you're operating in sin, especially if you're operating in sexual sin and stuff, then the enemy has legal right to come against you. That's why it's so important and critical for us to draw closer to the Lord, to consecrate ourselves so that we don't have the consequences of the sin. When you consecrate yourselves to the Lord, then you put him first. You pursue purity, righteousness, holiness. Now there's, there's so much that the modern day church and people that attend it need to change. And it's not a pleasant message to talk about. Well, we need to pursue righteousness and purity and holiness. Who wants to hear that? They want to keep operating in the sin of the world. I'm like, well, if you keep operating in the sin of the world, you're going to have consequences. You're not going to have the protection of those who have consecrated themselves. You're going to have the consequences instead. And um, in fact, somebody had sent me yesterday uh, a satanic uh, meal get together 
with these people from Hollywood. And I'm not going to go through all the people that I had seen that were there, but it was evil. It was gross. I mean, they were like acting like they were eating the bodies of, of uh, people, and it was actually cake. Uh, but it was disgusting. And I'm like, my gosh, what normal person would ever choose to attend something so disgusting and gross? And then another lady that um, I've just been made aware of a couple days ago, she had a dream of the Hollywood Walk of Fame and a lot of those that are walking on that Hollywood Walk of Fame, there's a lot of names there of people who are not at all close to the Lord, who are closer to the enemy and the Lord was showing her that it's going to become a Hollywood Walk of Shame. That when the truth comes out of the people, not all of them in Hollywood, but a lot, they have sacrificed their lives, essentially, to Satan and uh, are making a mockery of God. And, it, and I do sense the Lord saying, enough is enough is enough. We're not going to tolerate this anymore. It's time to pursue, pursue godliness, purity, and righteousness in all of our lives. And again, it's not saying that we are going to attain perfection. We are going to make mistakes, but it's that we are repentant for that to get ourselves aligned back with the Lord. So, anyway, I'm super excited about Passover tonight. What is about ready to go down? It's going to be amazing. It's going to be, um, for those who are close to the Lord, it's going to be an amazing night. It really is. And uh, we'll see what happens. You know, there may be some wailing. There may be some people who are being arrested for the crimes and the, and the sins of evilness that it's so perverse and so evil and so demonic and satanic. Um, and there may be some other things that are going to go on that we don't know about. So anyway, uh, I'm going to stay here in San Diego uh, until Easter. I basically, I believe I'm the only guest. I've not seen any other guests in the hotel I'm at, which is really crazy. Um, so... <laughs> And then I'm not sure I'm going to be next week. Uh, it's yet to be determined. And then April 18th, I'm going to be up in Northern California doing ministry. April the 25th, I'll be in Portland. And then Seattle, May the 8th and 9th and 10th. Um, again, trusting in the Lord. He's going to provide protection. And, uh, and we just declare that this whole Pandora stuff is gone. Uh, all this pandemic of the, of the coronavirus is gone just uh, in Jesus' name, and we can get back to a normal seat, but hopefully a more pure normal seat. Hopefully that we put the Lord first in our lives. You know, there's too many people that are in the body of Christ, too many people that are prideful and arrogant. They think that they can do whatever they want. They think they can lie about good, godly people, and they're way off, and the Lord is correcting those people. So it's extremely important that... Uh, you get your life right with the Lord. We all look in the mirror at ourselves, that we stop listening to people that are not with the Lord, that, that say that they are, that, that are liars. There's a lot of people out there that are ungodly that the Lord is going to expose, he's gonna shut down, and he's gonna humble them, you know? And uh, it needs to happen. It needs to happen so that they can become true Christians. There's a lot of people out there that are prophesying, that are, uh, thinking that they're all that and they're not they're not at all even a godly person they think that they are but they're not so the Lord is in the process of uh, getting us purified and we'll, we'll see again Passover is coming expect the unexpected hey it's lightly raining you all it's lightly raining huh right when I'm getting ready to be done I think that's symbolic Wow. I'm basically kind of in an open air area, but I have protection above me from the rain, but it is raining. So I just thank you, Heavenly Father. Let it rain right now in the name of Jesus. Let it rain, Lord. Cleanse this land. Purify us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Purify us, Heavenly Father. Let your rain fall. In fact, here in Southern California, um, there's been a lot of rain that's been going on since Sunday. Not, not as much here in San Diego, there's been some, um, but right now it's lightly raining here. 
but there's even been snow up in the mountains in California. So I just believe that's symbolic. The Lord is raining down on the entire world right now, and He's going to cleanse, cleanse. He wants us to be purified. And there's blessings from that. There's huge blessings. When you're aligned with the Lord, He's going to bless you. He's going to protect you. You're going to have favor. You're not going to have to ask people to give you money because guess what? The Lord will speak to those and that they will bless and you'll have your needs met. You don't have to manipulate people and guilt them and all that stuff. So it's such a blessing. So praise the Lord. So we thank you, Father God. We just pray, me, Father, for President Trump for Vice President Pence, and for all those under his administration right now. Thank you, Father God, for them. First of all, thank you, Lord, that you are protecting them. Thank you, Lord, that they are such a blessing, Lord, that they are standing up for righteousness and purity in the face of an enemy that is real, that wants to kill them, that hates them. So we thank you, Father, right now, Lord, for the protection supernatural over them and their families, Lord, in Jesus' name. We declare that they will sleep soundly when they do sleep and that you will give them wisdom and discernment, Lord, and that they will have boldness, Lord, and that they will do what is right, what is righteous, what is godly. And all those, Lord, that are instructed to take their lead throughout this world, Lord, will move, that they will move, Lord, that they will bring justice to those who are evil, and that they will save the lives of those who are being abused, the children that are being sex trafficked right now. Thank you, Father God, that they are rescuing them, Lord. We're bringing them up out of the tunnels, Lord, in the evilness. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. In fact, uh, I'll say this. I had seen something that was posted that the uh, Playboy Mansion of Hugh Hefner, which is in Los Angeles somewhere, that underneath it, they're finding tunnels. Like they're doing some type of quote-unquote construction there, and they're finding tunnels. So you can imagine, there's a dark underworld, a dark deepness of, of things underground and in the tunnels that are being that have been done for who knows how long, and the Lord is in the process of exposing that. He's digging it up, and he's using the Lord, or he's using, he's using his man uh, Cyrus, which is President Trump, to do this. So. You can hear the, the rain dripping. Isn't that cool? Wow. And there's blue skies now. <laughs> and the sun's still shining. This is cool. Probably there's a rainbow somewhere. In fact, I saw a rainbow yesterday. It was a very unique rainbow. It was like huge. It was massive. It was in the mountains behind my hotel, behind San Diego. And uh, I'll post it today. Hello, Joy Avila. Hello, Dot. Layton from Phoenix. Hello, Judy Hippensteel. Hello, Don. Hello, gang. So tonight, it's gonna to be exciting. Can't wait to see what's gonna happen in the next couple of days. This is like the most exciting times to live, really, even though a lot of people are in fear. But when you know who you are in Christ and you're protected, you have no fear. When you're walking in the Lord's admonition, when you are consecrated to the Lord, you're not gonna have the consequences of sin. Again, I kept hearing that, the Lord this, Lord this morning that kept telling you that. It's important, he said, to make sure you tell people to get consecrated to me and they won't have the consequences of sin. So, it is so true. There's so many that are having consequences of sin and then they want to put guilt trips and manipulate people to get them out of it. You know, give me money, all this stuff. It's wrong, it's ungodly. It's, uh, the Lord knows the truth, the Lord knows the heart, the Lord knows the mind, and there will be consequences for people that choose to sin. I always say don't take, um, a, lot of people, a lot of people take the grace of the Lord and his love for granted and they think that they can just go about and do whatever they want, but there will be consequences to sin. There just will and there are and you can't get around it. So anyway, um, it is still lightly raining here. <laughs> It's so cool. And the sun's out behind me. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. In fact, let me show you. Let me show you. I think I will. Let me get a drink here. I'll give you a little bit of a tour so that you can see what I see. First of all, I'm going to flip you around here. 
Look at that. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Ugh. So, that's a place where I've eaten at over here, there. And uh, over here is the naval base. You can see, heli or you can hear helicopters over there. Look, and there's blue skies. Oops, I can feel some rain. <laughs> So over there is the Navy base, also Coronado Island. I've actually been to Coronado Island when I was in business. We had our corporate meeting over there, an annual meeting. And uh, there's a bridge over there, right there, that goes to Coronado Island. Here comes a boat. Says holding tank pump out pump out there's that word again pump out <laughs> huh so the Lord wants to pump out the demons in people but he has to it's our free will to choose if we want them to be pumped out <laughs> all right there's downtown San Diego there's a couple of large ships that are right there There's a bridge that goes to Coronado Island. Pretty blue skies right now. There. And then over here, the airport is like right, right over there. And then there's also the uh, Coast Guard that's over there. Let me go ahead, I'll walk on down. See, that's where I was at. <laughs> In the sun. Over here's the airport, San Diego airport. And a lot of boats in the harbor here. You have tons of boats in the harbor. They have some really gigantic ones all over here. But you can see right there, it's like raining over there. But the airport's on the other side of that. Look how pretty San Diego is. San Diego's sunny something like 90% of the time. That's kind of why I chose to come here. Because I wanted to be in the sun so I could walk outside. And we need to pursue the sun, S-U-S-S-O-N, Jesus Christ. So very symbolic. All righty. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for this Passover, that this is a very special, special time. And we just trust you, Lord, and we trust in you. We have no fear. We have no worry. You will protect us. You will protect us. You will provide for us. You will provide for our health, for our finances, in our relationships. As long as we align ourselves with the Lord. And that the, uh, the plague will not touch us. It will pass over us. So we thank you, Father God as we pursue a life that's consecrated to you so that we will not have the consequences of the sin. So we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we declare amen and amen. Alrighty, well, have a great Wednesday, a great Passover tonight, and uh, we'll have interesting dreams, I believe, tonight. I believe all of us that are of the Lord We'll have some very interesting dreams. 
Um, there goes the seagull. Yay. Alrighty, I will see you guys later. Love ya. Bye-bye.